Dr. Zamboni, thank you very much for joining us here today and uh, for being here at the ISNVD conference. Um, a year ago, a little over a year ago, we had an interview you, um, at the ISIC conference in January in 2011. I'd like to kind of follow up with um, that conversation that we started a year ago. One of the questions I asked you was, what was your surprise that you, that came during the first year of this research and being announced to the public? And you mentioned that it was the, skeptic, the skepticism of the medical community for your hypothesis. What I'd like to ask you now, as a follow-up to that question, how do you think, has anything changed this year? Do you feel like things are, that you're getting, there's more acceptance within the medical community? Yes, I think that uh, there is uh, still a very powerful tower full of uh, my colleague uh, with uh, the same skepticism and probably this not uh, changing along this year. But on the other side, I have to say that uh, I had a fantastic uh, work independently developed by me practically all over the world and with different methodology, different background, mm -hmm. uh, different perspective and ideas demonstrated a close connection not only between CCSVI and uh, multiple sclerosis but uh, also between CCSVI, brain pathophysiology, possibly important link with our neurodegenerative disease with uh, a venous or venous system involvement and I think that this is uh, really unbelievable in so short time. So I was very surprised and I feel certainly a better situation respect for last year. Although, of course, uh, there are, as I mentioned, and, uh, people not convinced at all and uh, also studies demonstrating something like, or try to demonstrate it, that this does not exist. So, very, very difficult position because uh, in uh, this situation is also difficult to exchange and to find something common argument to be shared and to be exchanged. However, really, I feel uh, that uh, we are on, on a good path. On a good path. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. Uh, just the difference uh, that I've seen in a year's time going to the different medical conventions and seeing the research that's being presented and actually the, the discussion of the perspectives, the different perspectives, and especially now with all the imaging. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about your new diagnostic tool that you're uh, starting to use, and is that going to be available in the United States? Yes, what uh, I would say uh, that we need to definitely go to uh, objective diagnostic and possibly non-invasive methodology because objective measurement uh, cannot be discussed so easily. Uh, I moved at the beginning uh, by using ultrasounds mm -hmm. uh, because in my, in my mind were very convenient for patients because uh, uh, there is uh, it's a comfortable, comfortable examination is uh, of course non-invasive and uh, uh, but uh, unfortunately, we proposed a qualitative study that is really very, very much operator dependent. And this determined a difficult situation with uh, highly variable results. However, despite this, uh, in uh, meta analysis, is a comparable study uh, made by some authors in Canada showed uh, an increased uh, risk of uh, MS in patient carrying CCSVI of more than 13 times. So this is, was very important, mm -hmm. putting together confirmatory and not confirmatory study. 
with, despite the big variance among studies, there was really a beta analysis confirmed the, the role of CCSVI in MS. This was very important. But to me, as I told before, uh, it's very important to propose objective assessment with ultrasounds, MR, MRI, or both, mm -hmm. in order to uh, to reproduce uh, the results and to give more and more evidence of the existence of the importance of CCSVI. Do you think that there's going to be a time that, um, oh, depending on the type of MS that you have, or neurological disease, that there will be one preferred diagnostic measurement than another? I mean, would you say that with a relapsing remitting, maybe they would use your new diagnostic tool than an ultrasound, uh, an MRI or something? Or it, will it be difference between the different phases of MS? Yes, uh, what was outlined in the year was the first message is to use multimodality. Uh -huh. examination because uh, uh, for someone it's better to use uh, MRI or MRV and perfusion for other ultrasound are very clear and uh, for other you need to combine the good and the bad of the two system in order to have a very clear picture uh, the second possibility is what type I presented today, and this phase is just uh, uh, a tool at the prototype phase, but it's worked very well. It's called the cervical platysmography. It's very it's cheaper and it's non-invasive. Uh, it's a system including the, the, the collar, very soft collar, uh, with a sensor capable to measure the blood volume in the jugular and in the other vein. And uh, the test is very rapid. You are tilted up and down very rapidly, and this creates uh, a stress to the mm -hmm. outflow of blood from the brain, and this can be easily measured. And according to our results, there is big difference between controls and neurodegenerative disorders, including MS. And it's not operator dependent either. It's not operator dependent. Of course, there is some overlap. So this is a, a good method for screening uh -huh. because uh, shows 75, 80% of sensitivity. So it's good sensitivity. And the other possible application is very interesting is to monitor post-op the patient for the stenosis or for, for something like this because it's very difficult uh, if you should uh, increase the number of procedures a long time to follow up the patient, mm -hmm. especially in the first 12, 18 months with uh, continuous uh, Doppler or MRV or something like this. This is, uh, cannot be probably applied in the future. Uh, this is a good possibility because it's a cheaper way patient who do, do not uh, show any abnormalities at platysmography may go to home uh, and wait for the next, uh, mm -hmm. the next uh, check after three, six months. And patients with some abnormalities can be studied with other methodology. But this really may help very much. And do you think, when do you think it's going to be readily available? that it'll start being used more. I, I think that uh, uh, I hope that within uh, this year this could be available because really it's not uh, a difficult device. Uh -huh. uh, we are trying to um, optimize to, to improve the chair uh, with a motor uh, and to be to to have a safety of the chair, but we are very very close to this, and uh, I think that this can be. Now, does it also measure the azagus too? I didn't I didn't no, quite get no, that today. No, I, no, so, no, okay. No, so, this cannot be done. But it's uh, just the. 
just the jugular, the neck. Y yes, okay. but uh, uh, yes, it will outflow from the brain basically. Okay. And uh, however, in our experience, it's very difficult that you do not have. Uh, you do at least one jugular with a problem in the neck, and the system is enough uh, sensitive to detect uh, abnormalities. Mm -hmm. Also, if you should have uh, a not uh, severe stenosis in the neck, uh, it, uh, uh, if you have something abnormal, the system is capable to catch it. Okay. Uh, let's go on to a little bit different subject. Uh, one of the other things we talked about last year was the social media, um, the internet, the blogs, the Facebook, and how we had a firestorm going last year with uh, the patients. I would say that, what do you think now that maybe the medical community themselves, it seems to me like uh, the medical community are connecting, collaborating a little bit more. Is that because of the social media, do you think? Uh, this happened probably at the international level, but uh, in Italy it's not the same condition because many of my colleagues are not very happy that patients uh, uh, exchange information by internet and uh, it seems that uh, there is something uh, created by me, but <laughs> I never <laughs> participated, so uh, sometimes it's very, uh, very difficult to explain that this really uh, is a need of the patient because uh, our patients are very interested uh, in uh, exchange information independently. That's right. Yes. So. Yeah. Well, I will have to say that, again, uh, the Alliance website, thanks to you, you reviewed much of our medical content. And this is good, in my opinion, yes. because if you may review in order to not uh, spread uh, not inaccuracies. Act, inaccuracies. Yeah, yeah. And this is a part, and so, a part and of, of our work of physician, because we have to educate and the, the patient to inform very deeply and to ask for all the questions. Well, and that's, you know, we have to thank you. We thank all the other doctors that participated in that. And because of your collaboration with us, you helping us, um, I think I mentioned to you, like the National MS Society, they linked to our website. Yes. For, thank you. Yeah. And yeah, I uh, agree. so I, you know, I, I think slowly we're moving into. Uh, getting the information out to the patients. One other thing, though, is that what we do find is that there's a lot of people out there that have MS that know nothing about CCSVI. And that those are the ones that get onto the Internet, and then they start looking at the blogs. And so we have to bring those back to us, over back to... Yes. Uh, I think that uh, uh, really we, we are at the beginning of the story. Certainly... Uh, there is a proportion of patients that in my experience is not uh, very very high really because uh, I found uh, a big proportion around uh, 90 percent uh, of my experience with association between the two but uh, there are other centers really with uh, very low prevalence of mm -hmm. CCSVI and multiple sclerosis, so we have to accept, of course, uh, the assessment of the other mm -hmm. center because uh, this is very important. But in the meantime, as I told you before, we need to improve our methodologies because probably a proportion of patients that actually are not detected can be in the future. Mm -hmm. We don't know this, but you have to work to to improve the accuracy. Yeah. Okay, do you have anything? Um, I think you brought, probably have other things to do this afternoon. Yes, of so course. anything else that you would like to end with? I just, again, want to thank you for everything that you've done. It's a, and, uh, it's a pleasure It's been a, a pleasure. So thank pleasure. You. Okay. Mm -hmm.